Welcome to one of the additional Bible studies for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. This is the Tanakh that we're reading from, uh, the Holy Scriptures, the new JPS translation according to the traditional Hebrew text. This week we are covering Genesis chapter 12 through 23. We're going to open with an opening prayer and then continue from there. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability once again to be able to study your word in all its forms. It is such a treasure. Your word is such a treasure to us. And, and we, we, we definitely love reading your word, integrating your word into our spirit. And we ask the Holy Spirit to come lead us and guide us and direct us. In this entire session and show us what it is that need, we need to grasp from this lesson and integrate it into our spirit keep our eyes and ears of our of our spirit open and receptive we thank you so much we give you all of our praise and all glory and honor belong to you we pray this prayer in the mighty name of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ amen and amen Okay, in this Bible study, um, we are just going to basically read the Bible study. Where if, if there's something that needs to be brought up as I'm going through, um, I will do so. I won't do as much of an, as an extensive uh, recap as, as uh, is done with the main Bible study. We are, uh, if you're following uh, all of our Bible studies, you know our main Bible study with the NASB version. Uh, uh, is is a little bit more in depth because that is our main Bible study. But we're running um, the additional Bible studies of the Tanakh and the Passion Translation. <clears throat> also, sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Um, so uh, we are going to get started with this, and we're going to. This is going to be the story uh, again, the story of Abraham and Sarah, mainly, and. Um, the promised child Isaac who comes through. These are the highlights of what went on uh, with the first patriarch, which is Abraham. Now he is not called Abraham at first. He is called Abram. Okay, so chapter 12, the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your native land and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse him that curses you and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. That is a covenant that still stands today with Israel, with, with the descendants uh, of this patriarch. Abram, Abram went forth as the Lord had commanded him and Lot went with him. Now Lot is his nephew. Remember, um, Abram had two brothers, Nahor, and Haran, Haran died, um, and but uh, Lot is is Haran's son. But he goes with Abram. Abram was seventy five years old when he left Haran. Uh, Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all the wealth that they had amassed and the persons that had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem at the Terebinth of Moreh. The Canaanites were then in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will assign this land to your heirs. And he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I, and that's spelled A-I, on the east and he built there an altar to the lord and invoked the lord by name then abram journeyed by stages toward the negev there was a famine in the land and abram went down to egypt to sojourn there for the famine was severe in the land and he was about to enter egypt he said to his wife there i know what a beautiful woman you are if the egyptians see you and think she is his wife. They will kill me and let you live. Please say that you are my sister 
that it may go well with me because of you, and that I may remain alive thanks to you. And when Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw how beautiful the woman was. Pharaoh's courtiers saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's palace. And because of her, it went well with Abram. He acquired sheep, oxen, asses, male and female, slaves, she, she asses, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his household with mighty plagues on account of Sarai, the wife of Abram. Pharaoh sent for Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? What did you not tell me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her as my wife. Now here is your wife. Take her and be gone. And Pharaoh put men in charge of him, and they sent him off with his wife and all that he possessed. Now, Sarai went along with that um, because, you know, that, that was her husband. She didn't want him killed either. But she went along with it to preserve his life as well. Um, but uh, that was not, uh, the Lord did not want that to happen. He did not want that, that marriage uh, desecrated uh, in any way. Chapter 13, from Egypt, Abram went up to the up into the Negev with his wife and all that he had possessed together with Lot. Now Abram was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold, and he proceeded by stages from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been formerly between Bethel and Ai, the site of the altar that he had built there at first. And there Abram invoked the Lord by name. Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents so that the land could not support them staying together. They were too large. Uh, what Lot possessed, what Ab Abram possessed, uh, it was it was too much. And, and the servants of both were quarreling, actually, for their possessions were so great and they could not remain together. And there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and those of Lot's cattle. The Canaanites and Perizzites were then dwelling in the land. Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, between my herdsmen and yours, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Let us separate. If you go north, I will go south. If you go south, I will go north. Lot looked about him and saw how well watered was the whole plain of the Jordan, all of it. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, all the way to Zor, like the garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt, so Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they, de thus they parted from each other. Abram remain remained in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the plain, pitching his tents near Sodom. Now the inhabitants of Sodom were very wicked sinners against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Raise your eyes and look out from where you are to the north and south and to the east and west. For I give all the land that you, you see to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring too can be counted up. Walk ab about the land, though its length, through its length and its breadth. For I give it to you. And Abram moved his tent and came to dwell at the terebinth of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and he built an altar there to the Lord. Chapter 14. Now when King Amraphel of Shinar, Shinar and King Ariok of Elisar, King Ketelamar of Elam, and King Tidal of Goim made war on King Bera of Sodom, and King Bersha of Gomar, King Shinab of Adma, King Shemabar of Zoim, and the King of Bela, which is Zor, all the latter joined forces at the Valley of Siddim, now at the Dead Sea. Um, Twelve years they served Ketelamar, and in the thirteenth year they, they, they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Ketelamar and the kings who were with him came and defeated the Raphaim at Ashtaroth Karnaim. Now, the, the, the Raphaim, we're, we're referring to giants. Also, there are other giants known as Zuzim. They call them Zuzim. And... Emim. Okay, so the Zumim, so they defeated the Raphaim at Ash, Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzim at Ham, 
and the Emim at Shev Sheva Periathim, and the Horites in their hill country of, of Seir at, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. So those, um, the Zuzim, the, the Emim, Raphaim, they're all referring to giants. There was, there was a, race, a race of giants on, on the earth. On their way back, they even even though they were just supposedly destroyed, they 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 were not all destroyed as as we can see, and they were not because um, we know that they survived because David uh, killed Goliath, who was a giant. On the way back, they came to En Mish Mishpat, which is Kadesh, and subdued all the territory of the the Am Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwelt in. Hazazan, Tamar, and then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, which is Zor, went forth and engaged them in battle in the valley of Sidon. King Ketelamar of Il Elam, king Tidal of Goim, king Ar Amraphel of Shinar, and king Ariach of Elisar, four kings against those five. Now the valley of Sidon was, was dotted with bitumen pieces. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah in their flight threw themselves into them. So the, those were um, bitumen, I'm sorry, bitumen pits uh, were tar pits, basically. So when they fled, they fell into them uh, while they while they rest. They threw themselves in them while the rest escaped to the hill countries. The invaders seized all the wealth of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. They they also took Lot, the son of Abram's brother, and his possessions, and departed, for he had settled in Sodom. A fugitive brought the news to Abram the Hebrew, who was dwelling at the terebinth of Memre, the, the Amorite kinsman of Eshcol and, and Aner, these being Abram's allies. When Abram heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he mustered his retainers born into his household, numbering 318, and went in pursuit of Dan. At night, he and his servants deployed against them and defeated them, and he pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions. He also brought back his kinsman Lot and his possessions and the women and the rest of the people. When he returned from defeating Hedelmar and the kings with, with him, the king of Saddam, Saddam came out to meet him in the valley of Shavai, which is the valley of the king. And King Melchizedek, Melchizedek of Salom brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High. He blessed him, saying, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your foes into your hands. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. So here is where the tithe came into play. Also, Yeshua, Jesus, is from the order of Melchizedek, not from the order of the Levite priests. So this is a, this is certainly a foreshadowing of that. Also, he brought out bread and wine. Uh, so remember the communion uh, that was uh, taught to the disciples in the upper room by Yeshua. And what we do today in honor and in a memory of what Yeshua did for us on the cross. So, so yeah, this is, there's a lot of types and shadows in the Old Testament, as I mentioned before. Uh, then the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and, and take the possessions for yourself. But Abram said to the to the king of Sodom, I swear to the Lord God most high, creator of, of heaven and earth, I will not take so much as a thread or a sandal strap of what is yours. You shall not say, it is I who made Abram rich. For me, nothing but what my servants have used up as for the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their share. Chapter 15, some time later, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. He said, Fear not, Abram, I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what can you give me, seeing that I shall 
I shall die childless, and the one in charge of my household is is Demisac Eleazar. Well, actually, this is other Bibles say it, it is Eleazar, my servant of Damascus. So you can see the little difference. This is why we're reading the Tanakh from the Hebrew Scriptures, so you can see that there's there's subtle differences. Abram said further, since you have granted me no offspring, my steward will be my heir. The word of the Lord came to him in reply that that one shall not be your heir. None but your very own issue shall be your heir. He took him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are, to, if you are able to count them. And he added, so shall your, shall your offspring be. And because he put his trust in the Lord, he reckoned it to his merit. Then he said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out from Ur of the Chaldeans to assign this land to you as a possession. And he said, O Lord, my God, how shall I know that I am to possess it? He answered, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a year-old chico, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young bird. He brought him all these and cut them into two, placing each half opposite the other, but he did not cut up the bird. Birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. As the sun was about to set, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a great dark dread descended upon him. And he said to him, Abram, and he said to Abram, Know well that your offspring shall be strangers in the land not theirs, and they shall be enslaved and oppressed four hundred years. But I will execute judgment on the nation they shall serve, and in the end they shall go free with their with great wealth. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a ripe old age, and they shall return here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So the Lord was was letting Abram know that um, that uh, generations um, actually that they would end up being held captive in Egypt, but they would they would be delivered and, and judgment would be executed on that nation that oppressed them. But that this was not going to happen in Abram's time, that that he would go he would go to his fathers in peace. But they would return. Um, when the sun set uh, and it was very dark there appeared a smoking oven and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying to your offspring, I assign this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kedmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Chapter 16, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Look, the Lord has kept me from bearing. Consort with my maid, perhaps I shall have a son through her. And Abram heeded Sarah's request. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took her maid, Hagar, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt in the land of Canaan ten years, and gave her to her husband, Abram, as, a, as concubine. He cohabited with Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her, her mistress was lowered in her esteem. So she put herself above Sarah, Sarai, and Sarai said to Abram, the, the, the wrong done to me is your fault. Although she gave, she gave Hagar to him. She, now she's not happy with this situation um, and how, how, how haughty Hagar is, ask, is acting towards her. And that's her servant. I myself put my maid in your bosom. Now that she sees that she is pregnant, I am lowered in her esteem. The Lord decide between you and me. Abram said to Sarai, your maid is in your hands. Deal with her as you think right. Then Sarai, Sarai treated her harshly, and she ran away from her. And an angel of the Lord found her by a spring of, spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the road to Shur, and said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? And she said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her harsh treatment. 
And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly increase your offspring, and they shall be too many to count. The angel of the Lord said to her further, Behold, you are with child, and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, for the Lord has paid heed to your suffering. He shall be a wild ass of a man. Um, he His hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell alongside of all his kinsmen. So we know that uh, the descendants are from from Ishmael uh, tend to be violent, um, and this this is very prophetic and very true. And she called the Lord who spoke to her, "You are El Roy, El El, El Roy, uh, meaning the God who sees." By by which she meant, "Have I have I not?" gone on seeing after he saw me. Therefore, the well was called Birla Laharoi. Uh, it is between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar bore a son to Abram, and Abram gave the son to gave the son that Hagar bore his name, him the name of Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. So, um, that is how Ishmael was born. And actually, um, the son of promise, as we're going to see, is Isaac, is his half-brother. So the, the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac are related um, through uh, Abram, Abraham being the father. Now, uh, Abraham will later be renamed, as we know, um, Abram. He's Abram, and God will rename him Abraham. Chapter 17, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk in my ways and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Abram threw, threw himself on his face, and God spoke to him further, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the father of a multitude of nations, and you shall no longer be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. Here's where his name is changed. For I make you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fertile, and make nations of you, and kings shall come forth from you. I will maintain my covenant between me and you and your offspring to come, as an everlasting covenant throughout the ages to be God to you and your offspring to come. I assign the land you sojourn in to you and your offspring to come. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting holding, I will I will be their God. God further said to Abra Abraham, As for you and your offspring to come throughout the ages, shall keep my covenant. Such shall be the covenant between me and you and your offspring to follow, which you shall keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and that shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you. And throughout the generations, every male among you shall be circumcised at the age of eight days. As for the homeborn slave and the one born and the one bought from an outsider who is not of your offspring, they must be circumcised, homeborn, and purchased alike. Thus shall be my covenant, uh, be marked in your flesh as an everlasting pact. And if any male who is uncircumcised fails to circumcise the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his kin. He has broken my covenant. And God said to Abraham, As for your wife, Sarai, you shall not call her Sarai, but her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her. Indeed, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she shall give rise to nations, rulers of peoples, shall, is shall issue from her. Abraham threw himself on his face and laughed as he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man a hundred years old, or can Sarah bear a child at ninety? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live by your favor. God said, Nevertheless, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall name him Isaac. 
and I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring to come. As for Ishmael, I have hated you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and exceedingly numerous. He shall be the father of twelve chieftains, and I will make him of him a great nation. But my covenant I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this season next year. And when he was done speaking with him, God was gone from Abraham. Then Abraham took his son Ishmael and all of his home, home-born slaves and all those who he had bought, every male in Abraham's household, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskins on that very day as God had spoken to him. Abraham was 99 years old when he circumcised the flesh of his foreskin and his son Ishmael. Ishmael was 13 years old when he circumcised uh, the flesh of his foreskin. Then Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on that very day, and all his household, his home-born slaves, and those that had been bought from outsiders were circumcised with him. Chapter 18, the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth of Mamre, and he was sitting at the entrance of the tent as the day grew hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing near him. As soon as, as he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, My lords, if it please you, do not go on past your servant. Let a little water be brought. Bathe your feet and recline under the tree, and let me fetch up a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves, then go on, seeing that you have come your servant's way. They replied, do, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three seahs of, 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 of uh, choice flour knead and make cakes. Then Abraham ran to the, to the herd, took a calf tender and choice, and gave it to a servant boy who hastened to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set those before them. And he waited on them under the tree as they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in a tent. Then one said, I will return to you next year, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. Sarah had stopped having the periods of women. And Sarah laughed to herself, saying, Now that I am withered, Am I to have enjoyment with my husband so old? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall, shall I in truth bear a child old as I am? If anything to, is anything too wondrous for the Lord, I will return to you the, the same season next year, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah lied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was frightened, but he replied, You did laugh. The men set out from there and looked, down toward Sodom, Abraham was walking with them to see them off. Now the Lord had said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Since Abraham is to become a great and populous nation, and all the nations of the earth are to bless themselves by him. For I have singled him out, that he may instruct his children and his posterity to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is just and right, in order that the Lord may bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, the outrage of Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grave. I will go down to see whether they have acted altogether according to the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will take note. The men went on from there to Sodom while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham came forward and said, Will you sweep away the innocent along with the guilty? What if there should be 50 innocent within the city? Will you then wipe out the place and not forgive it for the sake of the innocent fifty who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing to bring death upon the innocent as well as the guilty, so that innocent and guilty fare alike. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of the earth deal justly? And the Lord answered, If I find within the city of Sodom fifty innocent ones, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. So Abraham knows that, that, that he's about, they're about to destroy the city, and he knows his nephew and his nephew's family is there, so 
you can hear the bargaining. He's bargaining, and he's going to bargain all the way down to 10. So uh, Abraham uh, spoke up saying, here I venture to speak to my Lord. I, I, I who am but dust and ashes, what if the 50 innocent should lack five? Will you destroy the whole city for want of these five? And he answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But he spoke to him again and said, what if 40 should be around, should, what if 40 should be found there? And he said, I will not do it for the sake of the 40. And he said, let my, my Lord be angry if I go on. What if 30 should be found there? And he answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, I venture again to speak to my Lord. What if 20 should be found there? And he answered, I will not destroy for the sake of the 20. And he said, let not my Lord be angry if I speak but this last time. What if 10 should be found there? And he answered, I will not destroy for the sake of the 10. When the Lord had finished speaking to Abraham, he departed and Abraham returned to this place. Chapter 19, the two angels arrived in Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to greet them, and bowing low with his face to the ground, he said, Please, my lord, turn aside to your servant's house to spend the night and bathe your feet, then you may be on your way early. But they said, No, we will spend the night in the square. But he urged them strongly, so they turned his way and entered his house. He prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Well, Lot knew how wicked the city was and, and what could happen if they stayed outside in the square. And you're going to see what happens next. They had not yet lain down when the townspeople, the men of Sodom, young and old, all the people, to the last man gathered about the house, and they shouted to Lot and said to him, Where are the men? who came to you tonight, bring them out to us so that we may be intimate with them. So Lot went out to them to the entrance, shut the door behind him, and said, I beg you, my friends, do not commit such a wrong. Look, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you may not, and you may do to them as you please, but do not do anything to these men, since they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, stand back. The fellow, they said, came here as an alien, and already he acts like a ruler. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they, they threatened Lot here as well. And they pressed hard against the person of Lot and moved forward to break the door. But the men stretched out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And the people who were at the entrance of the house, young and old, were struck with blinding light so that they were helpless to find the entrance. Then the men said to Lot, Whom else have you here, sons and laws, your sons and daughters, or anyone else that you have in the city? Bring them out of the place, for we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against them before the Lord has become so great that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons and laws, who had married his daughters, and said, up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-laws as one who jests. They thought he was joking. And they didn't believe him. As dawn broke, the angels urged Lot on, saying, Up, take your wife and your, your two remaining daughters, lest you be swept away because of the iniquity of the city. So it's interesting, you know, it, you, know you look at, at Lot's, Sons, yeah, the, the ones that were going to marry his daughters, and they, they, they didn't take him seriously. I mean, when, when people are sounding an alarm today, people don't take people seriously either. I mean, so, I mean, the people are no different today than they were then. I mean, and this was very serious. Lot was warning them what was about to happen. Um, and still Lot delayed. So the men seized his hand and the hand of his wife and his two daughters in the Lord's mercy on him and brought him out, and left him outside the city. When they had brought them outside the city, one said, Flee for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stop anywhere in the plain. Just flee to the hills, lest you be swept away. But Lot said to them, Oh, no, no, my lord, you have been so gracious to your servant, and you have already shown me so much kindness in order to save my life. 
but I cannot flee to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Look, that town there is near enough to flee to. It is such a little place. Let me flee there. It is such a little place, and let my life be saved. He replied, Very well, I will grant you this favor too, and I will not annihilate the town of which you have spoken. Hurry, flee there, for I cannot do anything until you have arrived there. Hence the town came to be called Zor. As the sun rose upon the earth, and Lot entered Zor, the, the Lord rained Sodom and Gomorrah sulfurous fire from the Lord out of heaven. He annihilated those cities and the entire plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities and the vegetation of the ground. Lot's wife looked back, and she thereupon turned into a pillar of salt. Now, that pillar of salt still stands. It's kind of whittling away uh, over time, but I have seen pictures of it, it, it today, you know, in today's um, time. Uh, it, it still stands there. You can still make it out that it, it was what it was. Um, next morning, Abraham hurried to the place where he had stood before the Lord and looking down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, he saw the smoke of the land rising like the smoke of a kiln. Thus it was, when God destroyed the cities of the plain and annihilated the cities where Lot dwelt, God was mindful of Abraham and removed Lot from the midst of the people. Lot went out from Zor and settled in the hill country with his two daughters, for he was afraid to dwell in Zor, and he and his daughters lived in a cave. And the older one said to the, the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to consort with us in the way of all the world. They thought they were the only ones left. Uh, come, let us make our father drink wine, and let us lie with him, that we may maintain life through our father. That night they made their father drink wine, and the older one went in and lay with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. The next day the older one said to the younger, See, I lay with, with father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go and lie with him, that we may may maintain life through our father. That night also they made their father drink wine, and the youngest one went and lay with him. He did not know when she lay down or when she, she rose. Thus the two daughters of Lot came to be with child by their father. The older one bore a son named Moab. He is the father of the Moabites today. And the younger one also bore a son called, and she called him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. Chapter 20, Abraham journeyed from there to the region of the Negev and settled near Kadesh and Shur. While he was sojourning to Gerar, Abraham said of, of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. So King Abimelech of Gerar had Sarah brought to him. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, You are to die because of the woman that you have taken, for she is a married woman. Now Abimelech had not approached her. He said, O oh Lord, will you slay people even though innocent? He himself said to me, She is my sister. And she also said, He is my brother. When I did this, my heart was blameless and my hands were clean. And God said to him in a dream, I knew that you did did this with a blameless heart, and so I kept you from sinning against me. That was why I did not let you touch her. Therefore, restore the man's wife. Since he is a prophet, he will intercede for you to save your life. If you fail to restore her, know that you shall die, you and all that, it, that are yours. So early the next morning, Abimelech called the servants and told them all that had happened, and the men were greatly frightened. Then Abimelech summoned Abraham and said to him, what have you done to us? What wrong have I done that you should bring so great a guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. What then, Abimelech demanded of Abram, Abraham, was your purpose in doing this thing? I thought, said Abraham, surely there is no fear of God in this place and they will kill me because of my wife. And besides, she in truth, she is in truth my sister, my father's daughter, though not my mother's, and she became my wife. So when God made me wander 
from my father's house, I said to her, let this be the kindness that you shall do, do me. Whatever place we come to, say there of me, he is my brother. Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham, and he restored his wife Sarah to him. And Abimelech said, Here, my land is before you. Settle wherever you please. And to Sarah he said, I herewith give your brother a thousand pieces of silver. This will serve you as vindication before all who are with you, and you are cleared before everyone. Abraham then prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his slave girls so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed fast every womb of the household of Abimelech because of Sarah, the wife of Abraham. Chapter 21, the Lord took note of Sarah and as he had promised, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken. Abraham gave his newborn son, whom Sarah had born, born him, the name of Isaac. And when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham, Abraham that Sarah would suckle children? Yet I have, I have born a son in his old age. The child grew up and was weaned, and Abraham held a great feast on that day that Isaac was weaned. Sarah saw the son of son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham, playing, um, well, actually, he was mocking um, um, Isaac and being cruel to him. Mm -hmm. So she said to Abraham, cast out that slave woman and her son, for the son of that slave shall not share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly, for it concerned a son of his. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed over the boy, or your slave, whatever Sarah tells you, do as she says, for it is through Isaac that the offspring shall be continued for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him too, for he is your seed. But the promise was not coming through Ishmael. It was coming through Isaac. Early next morning, Abraham took some bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He placed them over her shoulder together with the child, and sent, sent her away. Now, understand, Ishmael is not a child child. You know, he had to be, you know, when you're thinking, he, he, he was a teenager when, uh, at least, when Isaac was born. Uh, he placed them over her shoulder, because remember when, when well, I just want to backtrack here, when they were first circumcised, Ishmael was already 13. Isaac was not born yet, so he was that much older than, than Isaac. Okay. Um, and she wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water was gone from the skin, she left the child under one of the bushes and went and sat down at a distance, a, a bow shot away, for she thought, let me not look on, on as the child dies. And sitting... Thus afar she burst into tears. God heard the cry of the boy, and an angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for, for God has heeded the cry of the boy where he is. Come lift up the boy and hold him, hold him by the hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the, the skin with water and let the boy drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He dwelt in the wilderness and became a bowman. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. At that time, Abimelech and Phicol, chief of his troops, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything that you do. Therefore, swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my kin and my kid, but will deal with me and with the land in which you have sojourned as loyally as I have dealt with you. And Abraham said, I swear it. Then Abraham approached Abimelech for the well of water, which the servants of Abimelech had seized. 
But Abimelech said, I do not know who did this. You did not tell me, nor have I heard of it until today. Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a pact. Abraham then set seven ewes of the flock by themselves, and Abimelech said to Abraham, what, what, what mean these seven ewes which you have set apart? He replied, you are to accept these seven ewes for me as proof that I dug this well. Hence that place was called Beersheba, for there the two of them swore an oath. When they had concluded the pact at, at Beersheba, Abimelech and Phicol, chief of his troops, departed and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk at Beersheba and invoked there the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, and Abraham resided in the land of the Philistines a long time. Chapter 22 some time afterward, God put Abraham to the test. He said to him, Abraham, and he answered, Here I am. And he said, Take your son, your favorite one, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the heights that I will point out to you. So early next, early next morning, Abraham settled his ass and took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. He split the wood for the burnt offering, and he set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his servants, You stay here with the ass, the, the boy, and I will go up there. We will worship, and we will return to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and put it on his son Isaac. He himself took the, the fire stone and the knife, and the two walked off together. Then Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he answered, Yes, my son. And he said, Here are the, the firestone and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? And, and Abraham said, God will see to the sheep for his burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. Now, here Isaac is not, Isaac is not a little boy, as, as one would think. His, you know, he's got all this wood on him. He's carrying as well. He is, he is a grown man, actually, when this is happening. They arrived at the place of which God had, had told him. Abraham built an altar there. He laid out the wood. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to slay his son. Then the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, Here I am. And he said, Do not raise your hand against the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your favored one, from me. When Abraham looked up, his eye fell upon a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that site Adonai Yaira, whence uh, the present saying, on the mount of the Lord, there is vision. Um, so um, the Lord provided for him. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By, by myself I swear the Lord declares, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your favored one, I will bestow my blessing upon you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars of heaven and the sands on the seashore, and your descendants shall seize the gates of their foes. All the nations of the earth shall, shall bless themselves by your descendants, because you have obeyed my command. Abraham then returned to his servants, and they departed together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Sometime after Abraham was told, Milcah too has borne children to your brother Nahor, who is the firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram, and Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel, Bethuel being the father of Rebekah. These eight Milcah bore to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Rumah, also bore children, Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makkah. Chapter 23, Sarah's lifetime, the span of Sarah's life, came to 127 years. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, uh, now 
now known as Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham proceeded to mourn for Sarah and to bewail her. Then Abraham rose from, from beside his dead and spoke to the Hittites, saying, I am a resident alien among you. Sell me a burial site among you that I may remove my dead for burial. And the Hittites replied to Abraham, saying, Hear us, my Lord, you are the elect of God among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us will withhold his burial from you for burying your dead. Thereupon Abraham bowed low to the people of the land, the Hittites, and he said to them, If it is your wish that I remove my dead for burial, you must agree to intercede for me with Ephron, son of Zohar. Let him sell me the cave at Machpelah, the cave of Machpelah that he owns, which is at the edge of his land. Let him sell it to me at the full price for burial site in your midst. Ephron was present among the Hittites. So Ephron, uh, the Hittite, answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites, all who enter the gate of, of his town, saying, No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bury your dead. Then Abraham bowed low before the people of the land and spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If only you would hear me out. Let me pay the price of the land. Accept it from me that I may bury my dead there. And Ephron re replied to him, saying, to him, my lord, do you hear me? A piece of land worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Go and bury your dead. Abraham accepted Ephron's terms. Abraham paid out to Ephron the money that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites. Four hundred shekels of silver at the going merchant's rate. So, so Ephron's land in Machpelah, near Mamre, the field, with its cave and all the trees, anywhere within the confines of that field passed to Abraham at, as his possession in the presence of the Hittites of all who entered the gate of his town. And then Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of, of the field of Machpelah, facing Mamre, which is now Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Thus the field with its cave passed from the Hittites to Abraham as a burial site. And that burial site still remains today um, where it was. And that is in Hebron, which exists today as well. And that is all that we have for this week for this Bible study. Father God, we thank you for your word. Very powerful word. Very many types and shadows and foreshadows. Um, which are revealed in the New Testament, in the Brit Kedeshah of Yeshua, the type and shadow of the only begotten Son being given over as a sacrifice. Now you did spare Abraham, Abraham's son. You spared Isaac, um, but you did not spare your own son in order that we could be redeemed. We know Isaac was the promised child in which in which all the descendants of Israel would come through. And also that chosen seed that was that was designated um, to also uh, lead to Messiah. So we thank you. We thank you for all the parallels, for all the revelation that we got this week in reading. It is always a blessing to us. And Father God, we just bless your holy name and we give you all of our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. And we, and we pray this prayer in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. We're going to get, move into the altar call and then close out this Bible study for this week. We always do an altar call in, you know, in, in all of our services. Um, this is something that the Lord put on my heart uh, whenever I do anything to also add the altar call. So if you're new to our ministry and you've been hearing altar calls at every 
at every teaching and at every every service this is this is why uh, and we never know who may run across these videos um, later down the line and they they may not be born again they may not be saved and this this is always there is I should say there is always that chance that someone that is unsaved can listen to this and make a decision to come to the Lord. So we never know um, who that may impact. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ. And his Hebrew name is Yeshua, and it means salvation. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. We cannot save ourselves. Um, later, as, as we read the Bible studies, you're going to see that the Lord put a sacrificial system in, in, in place uh, with, with Moses. Now, that is a type and shadow of what was to come when Yeshua gave his very life. And that sacrifice was, was the final one uh, that was needed as far as sin goes, because he was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, period, the end. Um, so all we need to do is confess our sins to him, return from your sins. Uh, they've already been forgiven because he died on the cross for us. And we just need to call on the name of the Lord. Call on, on the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. God gives us free will. Um, but make, make no mistake. Um, everyone will need to make that decision individually. So um, choose wisely because this affects your eternal life. I mean, the life that you're living in this fleshly body is temporary, but you will, um, you will, your spirit will leave this body um, that you're inhabiting um, at one, at, you know, at, you know, at the time of death and it will, but it will go on forever. Your spirit lives on. So depending on your decisions and what you decide, it depends on where that your spirit will go. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's from Romans chapter three, verse 23. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. Christ died for us while, while we were still in sin. We're born into sin, and at some point we make that decision to be born again and saved. Jesus himself explained to Nicodemus, in order to enter heaven, you must be born again. And Nicodemus questioned him and said, now, how can a grown man be born again? He, he can't go back into his mother's womb and be born again. And he said, no, that, that basically, and I'm paraphrasing that. He explained to him that is, that birth is, is the fleshly birth. He was speaking of the spiritual birth through his spirit and through what he did he, or what he was about to do. He died on the cross. He took away our, all of our sins when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. Because, again, there had been a sacrificial system put in place to just cover the sins of the people year after year after year after year. Uh, and these animals had to be perfect, blemish-free. They could not be lame. And we, when we look at our Savior, who came as the suffering servant, and who came as the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of the world. He was perfect. He was not born through the line of Adam. He was born through the Spirit of God breathing into uh, Mary, or Miriam, her Hebrew name, who was, a, who was a virgin. Fulfilling prophecy, too, mind you. There's a lot of prophecy on the Lord. Um, so... He gave it all for us. So it's a choice that you have to make. No one can make it for you. And all you need to do is call in the name of the Lord. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. Our part in this is so minuscule uh, when you think about what he endured for us, what was meant for us. He took it all for us, including our illnesses and afflictions before uh, he went to the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions and beaten beyond recognition. And by his wounds, we are healed. If you have never given your life to the Lord, you'd like to be saved, born again into the family of God. You can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I believe. Jesus died on a cross, was buried, rose again, is sitting at your right hand, and I believe he is coming again to rule and reign. I do not want to be left behind. I do not want to miss being in heaven with, with, with you, Father God. So today I am confessing my sins. I'm coming before you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for everything that you've done. You paid my sin debt in full, and I'm turning from it and turning to you and declaring you as my Lord and Savior today. I accept the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I am saved healed, born again, set free and delivered from sin and, and its consequences, and I am healthy of mind, body, and soul. And I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus, the most high name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen and Amen. If you've said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation one that teaches directly from the Bible uh, and get involved in their Bible study when you join a local congregation. It is so important for you to do so, so you, that you know that you are getting sound doctrine um, as well. You need to also vet that part out, that, that they're teaching directly from the Bible and not from somebody's opinion or for from ways of the world, other religions, and what have you. Make sure that that what is what is what you're listening to is sound doctrine. So get a copy of the Bible. Go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. Uh, you can choose from the variety of versions. Uh, the one that you're most comfortable with, I'm going to say, is the best one that you, for you uh, as a first Bible purchase. Because if you're comfortable with it, then you're most likely going to read it. But if you're not comfortable with, with how it reads, uh, nine chances out of ten, you won't read it. And it is so important that that you do read the Bible. This is, this is God's instruction manual for us. Not only that, is you are drawn closer to God and, and you, know, you can see his heart uh, in reading the Bible. And he really, really does have a heart for his creation. He loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life. You know, God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but through him the world might be saved. So that is the God we serve. That is your heavenly father. And you you are now born into the family of God and you can Call him Abba, Father, because he is your heavenly Father, and he loves you. He wants relationship with you, so you can talk to him just as you see Abraham talk to the Lord. He was a friend of the Lord, so you can be as well. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He wants the best for you. So. Um, Absolutely. Get a copy of the Bible and also pray to the Lord. Develop a prayer life. It's so important to, to go to God in prayer for all things. Even take the little things to him. 
So with that, we're going to bring um, this Bible study to a close uh, with the Aaronic blessing, also known as the priestly blessing. It is found on Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, when the Lord spoke to Moses, giving Moses instruction to speak to Aaron and his sons. Uh, he wanted to put his name on the children of Israel and give them a blessing. <clears throat> Aaron was the high priest at that time. And his sons were Levite priests, so they would they would minister to the people, uh, and also give blessings. And God had the specific blessing that He wanted given, and with specific wording. Now understand, um, you are you who are born again and saved. God has put His name on you. And he has sailed you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is also for you. I'm going to say it first in, in Hebrew and then in English. And in Hebrew it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. It is still early enough in the week to say Shavua Tov. Have a good week. And don't forget we have our main Bible study with the New American Standard Bible. And also we have the other additional Bible stu study running as well. Uh, the Passion Translation. We are reading Psalms 51 to 75 this week. And also for those that are engaged in the class Hearing from God, that's Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have prayer requests and you're not engaged in the class, we still pray. We always do corporate prayer no matter what we're doing on a Tuesday night. And we do lift up prayer requests. So if you would like for us as a corporate body to pray for you, we would be very honored to do so. Just drop me a message. Again, Shavua Tov. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you.